Yes, good morning. Thank you very much for the uh, invitation. Uh, I'm glad to share with you some thoughts about uh, miniaturized extracorporeal circulation technologies. Uh, of course, um, one could ask, and this was our main question, uh, conventional uh, AVR with a, a normal cardiopulmonary bypass is something which is established. It is comfortable for the surgeon, for the anesthesiologist, and for, um, of course, the uh, perfusionist. So why change? And of course, uh, one part is that we still may uh, be innovative. We know from the field of uh, uh, catheter intervention, cardiologists are looking more and more on our fingers. Uh, this is a figure uh, which was um, very surprising for me. Uh, this is our statistic in the last five years, despite the really aggressive uh, attitude of cardiologists in, in Switzerland, the numbers of uh, AVR is still increasing in my institution, probably due to the high uh, screening of patients and the overall increase in total number of patients. So um, I think there is nothing to, uh, to be uh, um, concerned about at the moment, but this is perhaps a possibility to just uh, improve or um, increase the excellence of the procedures. Some of these change uh, have already uh, been made. Of course, some are future chains. We heard about the access, we heard about prosthesis, and I will just concentrate about perfusion. Access is clear. If possible, we should think about reducing the trauma for the patient. I think in the prosthesis, there are some high topics coming on, and we are involved in two very hot topics, which is one, a tree leaflet mechanical valve, which is on the way to have a first in man in the next 24 months, and this valve will most probably do not need any anticoagulation after six months. And the third one on the right is a fully uh, biodegradable uh, valve from the Xeltis company, which uh, we have implanted already in the pulmonary position. This is really high topics, and I think with these in the hands, we will be able also a little bit to concur or compete with the uh, cardiologist. And the third one, of course, is uh, the topic of today, the uh, mini CPB. Mini CPB is not very new. You see here one of the first studies, uh, a randomized prospective study from uh, France, uh, published in 2004, and very briefly summarized that uh, the authors described uh, reduced mortality, less inotropic uh, support, probably due to better myocardial protection, uh, a smaller uh, rate of transfusion of this patient during and early after the operation, and less neurological complication. Now, what are the major changes of uh, miniaturized circuits? Uh, first of all, you will be able to reduce uh, significantly the priming volume. You have to deal with some change in the cardioplegia because you will not have an additional line in the traditional uh, MIEC systems. Uh, there is, of course, some concern about the volume management because uh, the patient is used as the volume uh, equilibrium, so you need a, a good perfusionist and also an anesthesiologist which, uh, who remains active during the cross-clamp time and during perfusion. And the postoperative management is not that different. What we strongly recommend is when you start with the uh, miniaturized circuits, you should probably start uh, quite a long time with isolated uh, closed heart operation, which will be uh, classically the cabbage procedure, and then just enter with a small opening of the, uh, of the heart uh, for myxoma, for instance, or for closing of PFO and then engage on really open heart surgery with the aortic valve being probably the most easier procedure, uh, open heart procedure to uh, introduce um, mini CPB systems. So, uh, of course, the, one of the concerns when you use the, a closed system in an open heart operation would be the uh, possibility to engage air in the system, so you have to manage uh, very securely an hair trapping system. And of course, for some of the patients which uh, present with a volume overload, I will show you an example later, you have to uh, add a vent, which is not necessary in cabbage operation. And uh, our question was in the, uh, in the start of the experience, should we vent through the left atrium or pulmonary artery? Um, we started with pulmonary artery because it was easier to, to get, but uh, mainly both uh, possibilities are uh, equivalent. 
one of our experience was in aortic regurgitation. The patient has usually much more volume intus than in aortic stenosis, and uh, you have sometimes too much volume in the operating field, so you have to storage this volume if it is not possible by changing uh, the position of the patient in anti book to get some volume in the legs, for instance, you should take out the volume in a cardiotomy reservoir, which is a first deviation of a classical MEC uh, system. And uh, the aortic stenosis is usually not well the problem. What we really want to have, and this is a, a, a picture during an aortic valve repair using the MEC system, we really want to have a dry field. So we do not want to be uh, scared by any uh, blood in this operating field. So some practical access, uh, aspect what we have introduced is something like the del nido cardioplegia, but uh, with very small volume, 100 milliliter, single shot for 60 minutes. Uh, the blood flow is the same as in uh, conventional uh, ECC, and the blood volume handling was a hot topic for us in the learning phase just uh, sharing with the cardio technician, should we use a type two or type three miect? I will show you the difference later on. So this is our cardioplegia, is uh, something to be mixed, uh, powder which is mixed uh, just uh, before the, the procedure in 100 milliliter. Uh, mainly it's a high potassium with, uh, with some uh, addings, but it's nothing uh, very uh, secret. We get two syringes and we uh, inject this not through an additional line with the machine, but uh, directly to an aortic root uh, cannula, uh, and you have an immediate uh, still stand of, of the heart. What we have, we have one randomized control trial with uh, um, two arms of 100 patients each, uh, where we use the type two, the more simple uh, MIEC system in uh, our institution. And these are very uh, few results of these uh, studies. You see here the lowest hematocrit value during the procedure on machine. Uh, nothing very surprising. Uh, in a conventional ECC, you see that the, sometimes you have extreme hemodilution with uh, about 20% of the patient getting an hematocrit below 20% without filling the system uh, with blood and without any blood transfusion during the uh, procedure. Whereas with the uh, mini system, uh, you have some patient being low, you see 5% between 21 and 25, but the large majority of the patient do not get under 25% of the patient and two thirds remain over 30% of hematocrit. When we extrapolate these results on a larger number of patients, you see the need for blood transfusion during the operation or in the first 48 hours, it's 1.4. Um, um, red blood concentrates per patient in the conventional, whereas it is one pack for 200 patients when you use the uh, miniature systems. These are the results of uh, MIECT on cerebral microembolization. These results were done by the neurophysiologist uh, who uh, got uh, the registering of hits in both carotid artery, and you see that at least it seems that uh, the uh, amount of gaseous microembolize detected by the HITS technique uh, in the uh, common carotid uh, artery and in the medial cerebral artery is lower using a closed uh, conventional uh, small um, CPB. Postoperative AFib, this is a combined experience in black. It is our experience with uh, over 8,000 of patients registered with our own database, which is based on dendrite. We have about 38% of patients having at least one episode of AFib during hospitalization. And you see in the same population, cabbage population mainly, uh, using the mini system, you have about 10 to 12%. And a similar experience could be observed with the patient um, who received a conventional aortic valve replacement with the conventional system on the left in red and with the mini system on the right. Uh, you see the proportion. We do not have a major experience with uh, aortic valve uh, replacement uh, compared to the overall experience with mini CPB. The same uh, uh, or something very interesting, neurocognitive assessment using the P300 methods uh, by the neurologist. 
we had clearly an absence of uh, significant neurocognitive impairment between pre and first postoperative measurement, which were done at seven and 30 days after the operation. Why some patient had an improvement of, uh, of neurocognitive performance after three months uh, is still uh, open to hypothesis. It is the change of the hemodynamic because aortic stenosis was resolved, uh, or is it uh, something else? It's difficult to, to uh, say. I was personally a little bit deceived uh, by these um, laboratory results. You see here some summarized inflammation, coagulation, uh, examination uh, using complement uh, fraction, TNF alpha, for instance, um, thrombin, antithrombin complex, uh, and DD mirrors. There were some differences during the perfusion, but at 24 hours after the procedure, only DD mirrors were really significantly different. So there is uh, still, after conventional CPB, uh, a self-recovery probably, which um, uh, pro preclude a significant uh, difference between these two techniques to be seen in the blood value after the operation. Just to have a look at uh, two or three studies which uh, received attention in the uh, literature here from, uh, from Italy, um, mainly uh, looking at intraoperative data, no major changes in CPB time, cross-clamp time, but a reduction in intraoperative blood transfusion. And as we already uh, described, you see here the result also for the whole hospitalization uh, less blood transfusion and uh, a le less bleeding um, amount about patients with the small systems. And this was uh, translated also in better hematocrit on pump with significant uh, differences uh, and also the number of platelets was better preserved uh, in patients with uh, uh, the mini systems. Uh, I just want to like to, dr to draw your attention on this paper. It's not a guidelines paper. It's uh, something like a consensus or position paper from uh, a lot of groups around Europe who have some experience with um, uh, minimal invasive extracorporeal technologies. Very difficult first uh, to get a common <laughs> denominator when we speak about this system. So one of the first uh, function of this um, team was to really define what is type 1, 2, 3, and 4. Uh, I think we discussed today mainly between type 2 and 3. The type 2 uh, has introduced a venous bubble trap air removing device. And in the type 3, you have a soft shell reservoir. This is the major difference uh, uh, which is added to the circuit just to collect blood volume and to handle blood volume not only within the patient but with your circuits. The type 4 is uh, preferred um, in some Italian and, and Greek centers we, which have a, a great experience. Uh, they may argue that the type 4 is able to be transformed in a absolutely classical CPB circuits within seconds, but uh, this is really not in our uh, own meaning uh, something which is still uh, a miniaturized circuit. So this would be the classical type two circuits with the centrifugal pump, the oxygenator, and the venous air detector, uh, which is uh, placed here. Um, and the type three, in the type three, you may add some small rotary pumps to handle the, either the venting or the suction line and not to be um, dependent on suction and transfusion, which cannot be done simultaneously in the type two system. So in the type three, you can suck and transfuse at the same time, which is not possible usually with type uh, two systems. And uh, this is the, the, the looking of the, the machine. These two small pumps can be had to the type two to transform it into a type three and to better handle the volume. Some function of the groups were to define the summary of evidence based uh, during uh, these uh, works. And you see, of course, there are not so much evidence level A uh, in the present literature. But we can say the mini system reduced hemodilution and preserved uh, hematocrit uh, during the um, operation. 
It reduced probably significantly the uh, incidence of uh, postoperative AFib. It preserved better the renal function and it improves also the myocardial uh, protection. All other evidence from either prospective non-randomized or randomized studies is uh, class 2A or class 2B. Uh, for us, what was uh, very interesting, and this is my last point, is comparing results of similar academic institution uh, uh, concerning the uh, early mortality of uh, AVR and cabbage. We have a highly competitive situation in Switzerland because we have uh, probably too much institution on a very small uh, geometric uh, area. And this is the, the reason why the federal office is looking at results extremely sharply. Uh, and uh, these statistics are sent out of the country to uh, do some analysis. And this is some analysis of our centers. On the left, you see the mortality for aortic valve uh, was in 2015 0.81% and for coronary 0.39%. I have worked personally also in both other academic institutions in Switzerland. So for me, it's difficult to see why should we have differences uh, be between these institutions because we really deal with similar patients. When these patients were analyzed with the classical scoring risks, there were no difference, but you see the mortality might be uh, three to six times higher. I would not do the hypothesis that this is only due to the MIECT use, which is established in my institution and uh, not established in both other academic institutions, but it might be at least one part of the difference. I think the last good message is uh, the future of conventional CPB is also very attractive because uh, the company are also trying themselves to reduce the priming volume, the tubing set, to um, of course, uh, reduce the uh, oxygenator size, the filter, and, and so on. And for those which, uh, who do not want to embark on mini CPB, they will have probably attractive alternative uh, from this new technology in the next uh, future. Thank you very much.